I have the pleasure of speaking with Stephen Borrega from Romeo School. How are you? I'm great, Tracy. How are you doing today? Well, the last time we spoke, you had just become the president. And since you become the president, I'm seeing some outstanding news, including the acquisition you just announced yesterday. Let's start there. It's been a, it's been a, it's been a great time over the past few months getting to know uh, the Romeo's assets. And quite frankly, every, every time I get on the line with, with our amazing VP of Exploration, John Bixock, I learn something new and exciting about these assets. So uh, yeah, this past week, we've announced the acquisition of a new, a new asset in Nevada, uh, the Kincaid property. And I think it's going to pair very well with our SCOSA assets. This is an asset that's been in the company for many, many years now. Uh, it's a former producing mine. And, you know, we had exceptional results back in 2006 where we, where we had three meters of over 180 grams of gold per ton uh, identified. We haven't done a lot of work there over the, since then. So pairing Kincaid along with the SCOSA, I think we're going to be in a great position to move our Nevada story forward. Well, and let's talk about this for a second. For those of you out sure. there that are new to Romeo's Gold, is it not correct that Romeo's Gold has been kind of a treasure chest where well-known treasure hunter Tom Drivis has been acquiring projects for 27 years and slamming them into Romeo's Gold? Is, would that be a correct kind of overview? I think that's a perfect way of describing it. Tom's done an exceptional job of identifying areas of focus early and picking up exceptionally uh, uh, large packages of land. You know, we were in the Golden Triangle, just on the southern edge of where the Galore Creek assets are. We've done uh, a very significant deal with a group called Enduro on a portion of that. We still maintain a massive land package in British Columbia in the Golden Triangle. We're in northwestern Ontario, just north of the Muscle White Mine, a Newmont producer, uh, and uh, we're the second largest holder there. Uh, we've got a, a Mali asset in Quebec. And as I mentioned earlier, we've got our, our assets in Nevada as well. So when I was brought on board, I was brought on board with a very specific goal in mind. And that is how are we going to streamline this company so we can do some great exploration work and create value for, the, for our shareholders. And uh, part of this process is going to be deciding how best to handle this plethora, this embarrassment of riches that we have, because we really do have an exceptional grouping of assets in the company. So it, would it not be fair to say that you're not just gold, silver, and copper, but you're molybdenum? What else do we have? Well, I think that that sums up the, the, the bulk of what we have. Of course, there's trace elements of all, sort of, of all, of all types throughout. But you know, we're really focused. The, the majority of our assets are copper, gold, with silver. And uh, you know, as far as the Nevada asset and the Kincaid asset is concerned, you know, a little bit of background there. Uh, it's it's a it's an interesting group uh, of claims. We we, we staked a, around a core 22 claims. We now have 109. It's about 900 uh, 900 hectares in size, and already we've identified six core targets. We've when when John was on the property, he was he, he, I think he came back with a with a smile on his face like a kid in the candy shop. He's found so many former workings. We have dozens of targets to, to, to look at on the Kincaid property. So that particular grouping is, uh, is copper, it's gold, it's tungsten, it's barite. And uh, we're, you know, we're really looking forward to expanding our understanding of, of the Kincaid assets. When analyst and columnist Dean Bristow did a story about you, he wrote me a, an email after he had published the story and said, is this, is this company for real? Uh, just because he was amazed every time he, you know, turned over another pebble, he found another project in your portfolio that he found intriguing, to say the least. Now, let me ask you something. With all of these projects, Stephen, why the heck are you acquiring more? Well, I think it's it, the, the model is going to be either we're going to find a joint venture partner or potentially even spin out assets. So what, we, what I did in Nevada was I felt that we needed to expand our footprint in Nevada in order to build enough strength and, and, and depth uh, to, to decide what we're in fact going to do there. So when, when good properties uh, present themselves, we're in the position and we always take the position that we need to acquire. Uh, that's part of the business model that's created Romeo since 27 years ago. It's Tom's 
one of Tom's mandates was to identify great assets and, 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 and bring them forward for shareholder benefit. And I think Kincaid was one of those examples. But I'm, I'm really focused on Nevada right now. Um, I, think, I think we've got a great offering. And uh, in the coming months, we're going to decide what's the best way forward to really un, uh, unlock that value uh, for the benefit of our shareholders. Well, right now, it sounds to me like everyone out there at Investor Intel should be watching Romeo Scold. And, you know, I have the benefit of knowing your background, Stephen. So we're excited to see what happens with Romeo Scold next. Please join us more regularly. And perhaps because you have so many projects, we should just take on one project focus per interview. How does that sound? That sounds like a great plan. I look forward to the next step. Okay. Thank you very much, Stephen. And that's Stephen Borrega from Romeo School.